Since starting this channel, I've spoken to literally thousands of producers coming to FL Studio for the first time, and they get their heads around most of it, but the plugin that always seems to be left to the side and neglected is Patcher, which is a great shame because it's a fantastic plugin. It often gets a bit of a stigma as being overcomplicated, and this is because some people use it in a really complicated way, but it's really simple and it's really easy to get your head around. And in this video, what I'm going to do is build up two practical examples. One is going to be an instrument using Patcher, where we're going to create like a house bass with like a low and a high separated section. And the other example is going to be an effects chain to save space on the mixer, but also to try some different parallel processing techniques. It might sound a little bit complicated, but it's more straightforward than you think. So let's get right into it. So going back to complete basics, Patcher is a plugin that you can load either on the channel rack just by pressing the plus icon here, going to the Patcher section and just loading it in like this and this will open up. But Patcher can also be loaded on your mixer. So you simply find your mixer insert, go to an empty slot here, go to select, and then it should be just here down in the patcher section. The real fun begins, I think, when you start using this to create instruments, which I'm gonna do in a minute with, with that house bass, but I'm just gonna start by explaining the basics with this effects chain uh, on the mixer. One of the biggest things I've learned through this channel is that everybody learns things in a different way and everybody visualizes things in a different way. So I like using the mixer and side chaining and routing and sending audio, but to a lot of people that doesn't they can't visualize it in their head and Patcher can be fantastic for this when you load it as an effect. Basically, with Patcher here, you're given a control interface where you can load a limitless number of effects. So you could load as many reverbs, compressors, delays, saturation, as much as you want, as much as your computer can handle inside this, this resizable interface here so that you can free up space on your effect slots. And that's how some people use it. But the way I use it is to often test out sound design and visualize different ideas. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So what I have here is the guitar that I recorded in the last video. It sounds like this. And what I'm gonna do is try to add some effects to that. I have Patcher loaded on the same mixer channel that I've sent this to. So this is insert two on the mixer and I have Patcher loaded right here. And if I press play, there will be no audio. And this is because inside Patcher, you have to patch the audio or MIDI signals. You have to patch them to where you want them to go. So this says from FL Studio. So this is the audio that comes like down the effects chain and hits Patcher here. And then this is what's gonna leave Patcher and go back to FL Studio. So right now there's no link between them. To create a link, you simply left click and drag and then drop it there. So that's uh, fairly straightforward. And then if I press play, audio will get through. Now to control the amount of audio that gets through, I can rotate this dial here, less, more, and then to mute it entirely, I can just right click. The idea is that you load plugins here and you route them. So what I'm gonna do is load an EQ. So I'm just gonna start by right clicking. I'm gonna add a plugin and then you have access to all of your plugins here. So I'm gonna open up pretty parametric EQ too. On this EQ, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove some low end and maybe even remove a little bit of a top end just so that you can really hear a big difference. And then what I'm gonna do is patch a cable from here by left clicking and dr dropping. And then I'm gonna patch a cable from here by left clicking and dropping just there. Then I'm gonna turn down the volume of this one here. And now all of my signal is gonna be going through this EQ and then out. So if I just manipulate this EQ a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is add a reverb after this EQ. I'm just gonna disconnect it from here. So the main output of Pyrometric EQ2, I'm just gonna disable. That was by right clicking and just disabling it there. So anywhere on the control surface, I'm just gonna right click, add plugin, and I'm gonna add a reverb. So what I'm gonna do is patch this from the EQ to Fruity Reverb and then I'm going to patch it from Fruity Reverb back to FL Studio. So now the audio is going to be going through an EQ and Fruity Reverb and out. And as you can see, we only have one instance of Patcher loaded on the mixer, so we're already saving some space on the mixer. And what I'm going to do is make this 100% wet. And because I've made that reverb 100% wet, what we can do is start blending the wet and the dry signal together inside Patcher. So I'm just gonna resize this interface so we've got a little bit more space to work with. The way I find that Patcher is most helpful is that it helps you visualize the flow of information, the flow of audio signal, I should say. If I just reactivate this, what we have here is a certain amount of audio going straight through un uninterrupted. And then we have another chain of audio that goes through an EQ or reverb then joins again. 
And at any of these signal points, we can just increase the gain. So we could have more gain going into the EQ. We could have more, more volume going out of the reverb. So let's try and blend this sort of wet and dry signal together. So that's just the dry signal there. Blend some reverb into it. And this is relatively straightforward to set up using Patcher, whereas on the mixer, I would have to have routed that audio to a separate channel, then back to the master. And sometimes it's not easy to visualize like that. But this is still very, very straightforward. So I'm going to add a delay as well. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to add a plugin, which is the delay. I'm just going to add Fruity Delay free. I'm going to make it 100% uh, wet. It's going to take the level down, the cutoff down a little bit. And then I'm going to patch straight from FL Studio and straight out to FL Studio as well. And let's blend the delay into the signal as well. So I'll just start with the dry signal here. Just like that. But the delay seems a bit muddy, so I'm gonna add an EQ after the delay, which I'm just gonna, I'm gonna remove this by right clicking. So delay three, just remove that. I'm gonna patch in an EQ just here. And then let's remove some of that low end. Nice. What I particularly like about using Patcher is that to do this processing chain on the mixer would have required three mixer channels and, uh, four, and four different plugins. Whereas I've done it with one plugin inside Patcher, I can still edit all of them exactly the same as, uh, as loading a normal plugin, but I've saved the space, I've saved the time, and I haven't had to route audio and gain stage everything around. It's relatively straightforward just with these cables and, and plugins on the interface here. But this is just a very simple way to use Patcher. And I think for people that the, the 10 effect slots aren't enough. Patcher is exactly what you need to use. If you're doing very complicated sound design with multiple plugins, I just try to do most of it inside Patcher, keep it nice and organized, and uh, you'll probably come up with some really crazy stuff. So the next thing we're gonna look at is an instrument, and this will make use of not just the map feature inside Patcher, but also this other feature over here called Surface. So let's take a look at that right now. So I'm gonna open up the channel rack here, and I uh, have a Patcher loaded, I'm just gonna delete it and let's load another one. So plus, patcher. So we have something that looks almost identical, but we have this little green dot instead of just a yellow dot. And this is because this is what we carry the, the note data or the MIDI data with. So I'm gonna build up an instrument. So if I right click, I can press add plugin. Now I have access to all of FL Studio's plugins, but also my third party plugins as well. So I'm gonna add Serum and you can see that it's been added along with a picture of Serum. And what I'm gonna do is build up a two part bass. So I want to make one bass that has at just the low end, one that has just the high end, maybe some reverb, and I want to separate those out because I don't want the reverb on the low bass. I want that to be separate so that I control the levels separately. And I also want to be able to uh, add some distortion and reverb and control those distortions and reverbs all together with some dials or faders that I'm going to use on the surface. So it sounds pretty complicated, but let's just take it step by step. So the first thing I've done is load Serum. Now I can open up the Serum interface and it, you know, you can edit it just the same as you can with any other plugin. And I'm just going to load up one of my patches. I've just chosen one of the house bass sounds like this. It's a very sort of low end sound. So that's gonna be one side of the patch. And when I press play on my keyboard, you can see that note data is moving on here and then the audio is in yellow. So notes come from FL Studio, audio goes back out to FL Studio. And if I open up the mixer here, you can see that it's going into insert five. I'll just increase the level a little bit. So that's my low bass. But now I wanna add a high bass. So I'm gonna do this in parallel. So I'm just gonna add another plugin, add plugin. I'm gonna use Serum as well. You can use third party and, uh, and FL Studio stock. I'm gonna go into here as well. I'm gonna choose one of my high basses. Just like with the last patch, we can mute these outputs by just right clicking them. So I have the low end of my bass sounds like this. And the high end sounds like this. And right now, if I play them together, we have the high and low together, but that's not that special. So what I'm gonna do is add reverb just to the high end. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect this node here. So I'm just gonna take that one off. I'm gonna add a plugin. I'm gonna add uh, a reverb, and I'm also gonna add an EQ, so EQ2. So what I'm gonna do is feed the reverb from Serum, and then I'm gonna feed that into, let me just resize this plugin a little bit. I'm gonna feed that into an EQ, 
and then I'm going to feed that back out to FL Studio. So now if I just start adjusting this, uh, this reverb here, nice. Okay, so I'm going to take that level down, and then I'm going to maybe take away a little bit of low end as well, a bit more high. Sweet. Let's mix that low end back in. Still think I have too much of this high signal. A bit more of the low. Awesome, so that's starting to work for us. The next thing I'm going to do is disconnect this top output as well, and I'm going to add in a distortion plugin. And what I'm going to do here is do some sort of parallel processing. So I'm going to use Fruity Fast Distort, I think, which is just here. And what I'm going to do is just patch it into there, patch it into there. And with that patched in, just listening to the low end, we have this. So it's a lot more of a distorted sound. So the next thing I'm going to do is create a dial to control the reverb and the distortion amounts. So I'm just going to go to this mix dial here and activate. Once you've activated a dial, it means that you can create an automation clip for it or link it to a controller. So you could create an automation clip on the playlist or link it to your MIDI controller. And then what I'm going to do is also activate the reverb wet level, I think. So I'm just going to activate this here. Now what I'm going to do is go over to the surface. And this is the side that we haven't talked about yet. So this is where you can create a control surface. And what this means very simply is that you can add dials, sliders, uh, X, Y effects, and all sorts of stuff that you can link to other parameters inside FL Studio. Now you could link to any parameter at all, or you can link to ones inside Patcher. So if I just delete the X, Y, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to make a custom slider. So I'm going to delete all of these and then I'm going to go to the plus and then I'm going to go to the control creator. And what you can do here is create different types of wheels, sliders or buttons. So I'm going to create a custom slider. I'm going to make one that looks like this and I'm just going to change the color to purple. Awesome. That's the one that I want. So I'm just going to drag that slider onto there. And I'm also just going to add a button, which is going to look like this, I think, because I like the look of that one. Let's just drop that straight onto there. What you can do from here is resize all of these. Right now we're in this editable mode because the spanner is selected. So I'm going to deselect that and click on this little pointer icon. And now I can move these dials just like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is link these to the internal controls. So on this dial, I'm just going to activate it. And on here, I'm just going to activate that as well. And now that I'm back on the map, I can link these. You'll notice all these little red nodes have appeared from the surface tab here. And there's also a red node on the fastest store and the reverb. And if you look up at the top left corner of FL, it says that this is for the wet level. This is for the mix level here. And that these two nodes are for the slider and the knob just there. So what I'm going to do is link the slider to the reverb level down here, and I'm going to link the other control to the mix level of the distortion. Now, if I go back to the surface, if I play the bass sound and then I turn the dial up, you can hear that I'm distorting that bass. And if I play the bass and move the slider up, we get more reverb, just like that. So we can get like a really distorted and reverbed bass. Now, of course, you could actually link one to control both of them. So if I disconnect this link here, I'm going to take another cable from this knob here down to the fruity reverb. And now both of them are controlled together. So we can get a really distorted, crunchy sound uh, just from uh, you know manipulating one dial here. And this is where I think the true power of Patcher lies with this kind of complex sound design stuff, just being able to use this map here to visualize the way that the signal is flowing and say, okay, it's flowing from FL Studio, it splits, one's going to the low bass, one's going to the high bass, then the reverb, then the EQ, then out. It can just be a really simple way to visualize stuff. It's definitely not for everybody and some people prefer the more traditional way of viewing it, but for anyone that's into like modular stuff and can visualize the cables and patching things in. It just seems like a no brainer for some people's workflow. What I'm going to do as well is I'll clean up this patch and I'll leave it in the description. So it should take you to like a Google Drive link. You can download this for free um, just in case you haven't tried it and maybe you want to try the sound. I quite like this sound that we've made. So it's yours to keep now. And I hope the video has been helpful in some way. I think this is um, a kind of different way to do these tutorials instead of just me pointing and saying, this does this, this does that. Maybe walking through the process like this whilst creating something made a little bit more sense in this, uh, in, in this particular video. So let me know if you liked it. And I can't wait to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.